Hi Capricorn, Eray Taronic here, master weaver of mystery suspense thrillers as well as broadcaster of astrology. First, I'd like to thank you for being here with me today, lending me your ears, your eyes, and your time. I know it is valuable. Therefore, I will be sharing valuable information with you about the cosmos and giving you uh, ways to navigate these obstacles to get the best options or the best outcomes even. So please don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. If you guys would like to know more about E. Ray Taronic, the author, you can hit the down bar. You'll find all of my links for social media, as well as the links for the healing chakra beads and the links for the sun catchers there. So let's get into it. We're here to go over not only Taurus season, but May in its entirety. OK, we're going to go over both moons, the full moon, uh, the Scorpio full moon and the uh, Gemini new moon and how it will affect you. And we're going to go over the major transits first. And when I get into your individual scopes, I'll let you know how the, all of those transits are going to affect you as well. OK, and some things we can do to kind of get around it or whatever the obstacles. So. That being said, Taurus season. Taurus season is here from April 20th through May 20th. The fixed Earth sign of Taurus is ruled by Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system. Venus represents the finer things in life with love and money right at its center, which, make, <clears throat> which makes Taurus all about delving into those sensual pleasures that bring us contentment. This sign craves the feeling loved uh, literally and figuratively. OK, so this season, take some time to enjoy while appreciating what it is you have literally and figuratively, <laughs> you know, um, don't just take everything in, you know, make sure you take the time to think about how you got it and what you went through to get it so that you appreciate it is what I mean. OK, so the urge to treat yourself might be heightened during Taurus season. To overindulge is one of the many characteristics of the sign. Not giving Taurus a bad rap or anything. They just know what they want and they want a lot of it. That's all. <laughs> um, that being said, you want to be discerning as to how much of a glutton you allow yourself to become. Okay? If you find yourself coming into some extra cash, don't spend it all in one place. Don't spend it all, in fact. You know, we're not out of the woods yet. Luckily, Taurus is a grounded sign, which is sure to help you uh, set a plan of action into place uh, to combat the current issues we might be facing. But remember, one step at a time, Taurus demands we be gentle with ourselves, okay? So, oh, on May 16th, I wanna share something uh, cute with you. Uh, on May 16th, Jupiter and Venus align with the moon, uh, creating a smiley face in the sky. Um, my cousin Becca actually sent that to my messenger. I'm going to put the link in the astronomy uh, in the newsletter. If you're not subscribed to my newsletter, by the way, you can put your email below. I'll add you to the list. Um, but yeah, that's coming up on May, May the 16th. Now, May overall in its whole is going to be about reviewing, restructuring, uh, rehashing, reevaluating. Re Re-editing. You're going to be going back over a lot of things in a lot of areas because there's going to be a wall of retrogrades, a wall of planets are retrograding. So, um, you know, they're all going to be looking back. OK. All right. And we're going to go over that as well. Now, Uranus, the planet of shocks, revolution, surprises is in Taurus, the earth sign of, you know, reigns over our money, our values, the second house. Um, these areas are experiencing a drastic evolution. More shocks and surprises are in store at the start of the month with Uranus conjunct the sun when they're both there. OK, Mercury will be there. Uranus, the sun. OK, so. Also, with Mercury there, <laughs> like I was just rushing into um, until May 11th, you can expect some surprise or shocking communication coming your way. OK. Um, the sun entered Taurus on uh, the 19th, and that's for everyone. This is for the collective. Um, the sun enters Taurus, entered Taurus on April 19th, and it remains there until May 20th when it transitions into Gemini. Uh, Juno, it's a large asteroid. They used to think it was a planet long ago. Um, it goes direct in the sign of Libra on May 26th. 
Juno is about marriage and commitment, relationship issues, domestic disputes, and natural disasters are all affected during Juno's shift, okay? And she's shifting on May 26th. She wants justice. It's in Libra. She wants, however, she gets the balancing of those scales. She wants it, okay? Now, Mercury, the planet of communication, skills, sales, intellect, it enters Gemini on May 11th, which can have you feeling chatty. That's a welcome change, though, because it's going to have moved away from the sun and uh, Uranus over there in Taurus or have moved away from the, uh, yeah, in Taurus. So, you know, it'll be a welcome change. People will be chatting it up and things like that. It's the perfect time with all this social media stuff going on to make connections online. Okay. Now, once Mercury transitions over into Cancer on May the 28th, um, it's going to be debilitated. So communication could uh, make you guarded, moody, you know, uh, emotional. That that energy will pass. Word of advice, just try to remain positive. Try to remain, remain in the present, okay? Um, Venus, planet of romance, finances, pleasure, abundance. Um, it goes retrograde in Gemini on May 13th, okay? Love and, uh, love and communication are a focus, of course. Um, the way you go about putting these things into action more so is the question. Um, some will get a second chance to deal with the same issues over again. Will you handle them the same way that you did in the past? If so, did you receive your desired result? If not, this is the time to, to change the outcome. You know, this is your chance to shift the outcome. Talks about finances will be a big focus during this time as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had to sneeze. Okay. Talks about finances will be a big focus during this time as well. So, of course, I don't recommend you making any big financial shifts at this time. You know, don't go quitting your job or anything like that. Now, if you need to take on a, a, a side hustle to make some money, that's fine. If you want to scale back on some of your bills, that's even better. Um, I also warn against making any drastic changes in your appearance. You know, don't go having uh, cosmetic surgery when Venus is retrograde. That would be a disaster. Or, you know, chopping all your hair off color and you just might not like to have a taste for it once the planet goes direct. Okay. So, you know, just wait on that a bit. Now, uh, Mars, planet of energy and challenges, enters Pisces, where it is debilitated on May the 13th. Now, I don't want you to get uh, uh, negative, you know, when I say debilitated. I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying Aries, uh, Mars rules Aries. Aries are forceful. They're driven. They're rearing to go. They're not like Pisces, you know, Um Pisces navigates their issues with a little more intuition and things like that. So they move differently. Regardless as to their respective energies, these planets are being called together to uh, mesh energies and work together. That being said, you're going to find yourself navigating issues with a bit more forethought and you're going to find yourself using your intuition um, to find solutions as opposed to just uh, head straight on, um, you know, through the gate, okay? Uh, exhausting itself is something Pisces simply doesn't feel the need to do. So that's what it's calling for you to do, the energy, okay? Uh, Jupiter, uh, a planet of luck and expansion, goes retrograde on the 27th, at, uh, on, goes retrograde at 27 degrees in the sign of Capricorn, your sign, on May 14th. Joining Pluto, that's uh, already retrograde, and heightening everything within its sphere, okay? Now, remember, Jupiter wants bigger, but that doesn't always translate to better. I'll elaborate below. Um, remember that travel also deals, uh, Jupiter also deals with travel, so you can continue to expect delays in travel as well, okay? Um, Saturn, Saturn goes retrograde on uh, in Aquarius at one degree on May 11th. As you know, Saturn is the planet of restrictions, responsibility, karma. This is about your foundation, okay? It, it, your actions help determine how your karma plays out, okay? It's not the time to make drastic career changes. No going and quitting your job or anything like that. Um, and you're ruled by Saturn. This is your ruler. Your ruler is going retrograde, okay? You're looking back. 
Um, now, Pluto. Pluto is the planet of rebirth, renewal, resources, taxes, debt. It's now retrograde until October 4th. This is a time of transformation for the collective. Be gentle with yourself. In the coming months, our faiths will be tested. Do not allow fear to mentally bind you. OK, don't be easily deceived. Do your homework before believing media or social propaganda as it will be being shoved into our faces from all directions. We as a collective are at a vulnerable point in our lives. We as individuals must do our part by keeping our hopes up and maintaining our mental health, as well as doing what we can to be a part of the solution, as opposed to perpetuating the problem. The silver lining is that Pluto being conjunct Jupiter does help us to keep our eyes on the prize while facing the coming shifts in our personal and private lives. I implore you, keep a kind heart. The world needs compassion, as does our entire human race. Now, that being said, moving along. The full hair moon, also called the flower moon, is on May the 7th. It's in the fixed water sign of Scorpio. Open up the lines of communication, Capricorn. Dive in deep, as Scorpio requires a look for what's beneath the surface. Scorpio is not a superficial sign. Scorpio is about uh, realness you know, the trueness of it. Just be mindful that you think before you speak, okay? Now, Scorpio is also about death and transformation. The full moon brings matters to a point of culmination. Any full moon brings matters to a point of culmination. Whether it be in business or love, there is much to be revealed this moon cycle. Um, this moon cycle actually T-squares Mars uh, and Aquarius, in Aquarius and the sun and Mercury in Taurus. Um, let me show you actually. Okay, so this is where the full moon is gonna be. It's gonna be T-squaring uh, Mars over here in Aquarius and the sun and Mercury down here in Taurus, okay? And I'll explain later uh, in the your individual scope how it's gonna affect you, okay? Now, um, the new moon on May 22nd, is in the mutable air sign of Gemini. Gemini is a curious sign who loves to communicate more over network. Uh, what new endeavors would you like to see in the works? You know, it's the perfect time to read up, ask around, take those initial steps, you know? I'll talk about how, uh, what area that's gonna be for you as well. So now let's get into your individual scopes, uh, Capricorn. Capricorn ranges from December 22nd to January 19th. The full moon in Scorpio, as we were talking about, uh, the T-square there is highlighting your 11th house of friendships and high hopes and goals, uh, your sector of creativity and children, as well as your second house of cash flow. Okay, so uh, let's see, here you are right here. So that means if it's affecting your this is your 11th house of friendships here. This is going to be your second house of cash flow here. And this is going to be your uh, house of creativity and children here. Okay. That's the T-square. That's what the T-square is between. So you may have uh, issues with the creative endeavor, with getting the money together for a creative endeavor that you're trying to get started. Um, and maybe, maybe because Scorpio actually, Scorpio is actually your hmm, sextiles you, I think. Yeah, okay. So Scorpio actually sextiles you and sextiles brings opportunity. So maybe you're gonna have an opportunity uh, or a friend brings you an opportunity that helps you to fix that problem and you get the money to get your creative endeavor started. And children are involved, involved as well. Maybe you get some money through child support. <laughs> oh no, it's your second house of cash flow, so it's not shared. But anyway, that's how that 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 kind of you kind of fit that all together. It's gonna have to do with creativity, children, romance, uh, friends, high hopes and goals and something to do with your money, okay? 
you're going to have an issue there, but you'll have the opportunity to overcome that issue with the sextile. A sextile is a good thing, okay? It brings you uh, opportunity, as I said. Now, Pluto uh, went retrograde in your house of image, you, in Capricorn, where it remains until October 4th. So like I said uh, before, or, or did I, if I didn't say it up top, your reputation is at stake, Okay. So keep it intact. Keep it intact, Capricorn. That's what that's about in your house of image. Now, Jupiter, the uh, planet of luck and expansion, goes retrograde in your sign on May 14th. This is favorable for you because it brings you rewards and opportunities uh, to increase cash flow. OK, on top of that, your fifth house of creativity and romance are highlighted through May 20th because of the sun's aspect uh to your sign when it's in Taurus, your sister sign, giving you a sextile. That's a positive aspect. Wonderful. Okay. Now, Mercury, planet of uh, skills, communication, sales, intellect, it's, it aspects Taurus, uh, it's aspect in Taurus when it's in Taurus. Um, it, like I said, it lends you positive energy because it's a sister earth sign I spoke before about just before about it, um, where children, romance, and even creativity are concerned. Uranus is there too. So that means you could have surprise communication. Maybe a, a child surprises you, says something to surprise you, or a kid or one of your kids um, has a surprise for you or something shocking, um, but it's uh, it's happy, whatever it is. It's, it's a positive thing, okay? Now, your ruler, Saturn, uh, goes retrograde on May 11th in your sign, uh, reminding Capricorns to handle their business, okay? Now, Mars uh, retrogrades in Pisces on the 13th. That's aspecting your third house of communication and siblings. This sextile offers you a, opportun a reoccurring opportunity again. Now, there, maybe you'll be having uh, some... Previously, maybe you've had challenging communication with one of your siblings and maybe now you'll start talking again. And this is an opportunity for you to start talking to them again, if you'd like, because there is a sextile there. So if you have had problems with a sibling before now is a perfect time to fix that once Pisces is retrograding on uh, May 13th in your third house of communication, sales and siblings. So, um. The new moon on May 22nd is in Gemini. It's in your sector of work and health, noting opportunities or changes in work or health, okay? So uh, maybe you can get a, a, a new job or a, a, a new way to create some income, okay? Well, look at that. Thank you, Capricorn. Be safe. And uh, I appreciate you joining me today. I'll see you next month.